Hello everyone, today we're going to be working on a mermaid tiara tutorial. Get excited! So the first step is to use a cake dummy. As you can see I've got a 4 inch cake dummy and it is wrapped in parchment paper. Behind that parchment paper is a piece of paper that has a crown template on it. I just have that template on the back so I can make sure that all my pieces are staying proportional to the other side. So what I'm doing right now is applying a liberal coat of shortening to the parchment paper. This is just so that the fondant will stick to it when I put it on there and it won't move around. And then as you can see, I've got um, some sewing pins and toothpicks in the back of that dummy just so that the parchment paper stays on and that I can prop up my dummy on the side as it is sitting right now. So what you see me doing now is rolling out a thin log Right in front of me is this Wilton mold. You can buy this mold on the Wilton website, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, really anywhere that sells the Wilton mold sets. And so I'm going to use the skinny border and I'm actually going to do this twice. I do this twice because when you pull your fondant out of this mold, it's actually kind of thin. I want it to be able to support the entire tiara, so I actually go over it twice. So it's okay if your fondant stretches out a little bit while you're doing this. It'll be totally fine. Your customer really will not be able to tell, especially if it's the first layer that you're going to be doing with the border. As you can see, I just apply it to the bottom of my dummy and I just push down on the dummy so that I make sure that it is going to be flat on the bottom. So here I go with my second strip. And like I said, I'm just going to use some Tylos glue and I'm going to apply that second border right over the top of my first one. So here I'm just applying some Tylos glue and now I'm going to take my second border out and just apply it right over the first. I like to alternate so that the large circles on the bottom or the first layer are behind the thinner parts. This is just to add more support like I said. So as you can see, I'm just lining up the circles to make sure that they're in the thinner parts just to give a little more support. It's okay to stretch it. And then I'm just gonna cut off the excess with my X-Acto knife on both sides. 
And you can see as I'm turning my dummy, the fond knot is not moving, and that is because of the shortening. It is absolutely necessary. So now we're going to work on the center piece, and for that we're just going to roll some long tapered logs. And you're going to start with just one in the center, and then you're going to go off to the side. So you can see I'm not using the template in which you would normally use it. I'm just using it to make sure that all my pieces are going to be the same length. So now I'm just going to use my knife to cut off the excess so that I can add a few more pieces on the side. Now 
And we're just gonna roll one or two more little logs for the sides. And of course, using Tylos glue to attach them to the rest of the pieces. And again, using my knife to cut off the excess pieces of fondant. So now that you've got the top piece made, it's time to start the curls that go on the sides. So for the large curls to the side, we're going to roll some long tapered logs again. And you wanna make sure that each log for these are about a quarter inch thick. So then we're going to curl the tapered end of the log. And use some Tylos glue to attach it to the pieces. These next two pieces are going to be the pieces that we attach the top half and the bottom half together with. Now we're going to go ahead and roll our second log, tapering it to one side, and again, just like the first one, we're going to roll in the point to create a little curl. And again, attaching it with Tylos glue. Make sure you press firmly when you are attaching your new pieces. You really want to make sure that they're not going to move around and that they're stuck onto the right spot you want them to be in. So now we're going to roll the side curls. 
And again, we're gonna need a long tapered log. And we're gonna curl the end in. And we're gonna apply it directly underneath the other curl that you just made. And I taper both ends of this piece because it is curled on both sides. And it is okay to squish your little tapered end in there. You're actually going to be covering up parts of it, so you won't even notice that it's a little squished. So now we're going to do the other side exactly the same. And don't forget, if you think your piece isn't the right size or it's not the same, you can always hold it up to the other side and make sure that it is correct. And again, I'm just using Tylos glue to attach my piece. Just like the previous side, you're gonna squish your little curl in there. If you squish it too much, you can always use a sugar shaper to redefine the lines. So right now we're using a shell mold. This shell mold is up in my Etsy shop, but you can use any shell mold you like. And I like to use this to lay one or two shells right over all the places where your little tapered logs meet. It adds a little bit more of a mermaid effect to the crown, and it also covers up all your little squished ends. We'll make one more and we just lay it right over the bottom edge of the first shell that you just made. Just a little layering effect to give it a little bit more dimension. So we're going to lay it to the side as well. And this goes in between your curls and your top border.
I know there's a little skip there, but I just used my Wilton mold to make the starfish. I used the larger starfish of the mold, and then I just applied it using Tylos glue. So now we're gonna make some little tiny shells. And we're gonna use the same mold that I was using before, but just a little bit less fondant. Now these tiny shells are actually for the ends of your crown, just so it's not totally cut off and doesn't look complete. So again, you're just gonna use a little bit of Tylos glue to make sure that it's secure. And of course, you're gonna do that for both sides of your tiara. And if you feel that your border has become too long on one side, you can of course cut off a piece, like I just did. So I've waited for my feast to dry for a few days, and now I'm taking out all the pins and toothpicks so that I can take my dummy out and fully paint my piece gold. Now I use pins in the back of my dummy because I find it is much easier and I don't have to worry about where the pins are, whereas toothpicks, I need to make sure that the toothpick isn't going to be in my way. So to pull my dummy out, I just stick a toothpick in and then I pull right out. And your crown and parchment should stay stuck basically to the table. And you're just gonna slowly peel your parchment out. Now remember there is shortening on it, so that is why your fondant wants to stick to it, but if you work slowly and carefully, your piece will not break. So as you can see, I have a totally complete and dry tiara, and now we're going to paint it gold. To paint it gold, I'm just using edible gold dust and vodka. And I use vodka because it dries faster than water does. You can of course use any alcohol because it dries faster. And then the only thing that you really need to watch for is if your paintbrush is fond of shedding bristles, just make sure you're not getting any bristles into your piece because you will be able to see them. And of course, make sure you get both sides of your tiara as well. You don't want to have any little um, yellow or gold pieces showing. You just want straight metallic gold. And then make sure you get down on the crown's level and really look into all the little cracks and crevices because it is very easy to miss a little section.
Once you're done painting your piece gold, you're going to want to let it sit for at least 24 hours before you attach your pearls to it or anything. And this is just so your gold isn't sticky anymore. You want to be able to handle your crown without it coming off on your fingers. So as you can see, now I have a completely dry tiara. And what I'm going to do is stick my four inch cake dummy right back in the center. And this is just so that when I'm working on putting the pearls on, I'm not worrying about breaking my tiara from the pressure of applying the pearls. And then just like how we had it before, we're gonna set our toothpicks into the sides so that it's not moving around. So our large blue pearl is gonna go on top and then we're going to roll a few purple pearls. You don't have to put them on where I'm putting them. These are just the colors that I like to see on the crown and I like the way that it looks. So I like to put the purple pearls in the intersections. Adding on the purple really just gives it a nice pop of color. And then of course, you're going to use Tylos glue to attach them. So once you've attached all your purple pearls, you're going to want to make white ones. Now the white ones are going to be a little bit different placement. We're just using our knife to cut even pieces so that they're all the general same size. And then we're going to roll them into little balls, just the same as the blue and purple pearls. Now we're going to put one underneath the middle purple pearl, using Tylos glue to attach it, of course. And then we're going to put three underneath the middle shell in a little curve, almost giving it like a pearl necklace effect. And we're also going to put two white pearls next to the starfish as well. And that's it guys. After that, you're just gonna wanna let your pearls set up on there for a few hours at least before you take out the dummy. And you are all set to create an amazing mermaid cake. Hope you guys had fun watching this tutorial and thank you so much for watching.